Welcome to the MLS show. It is me, Bas. I found him. He's real. He's real. For the person who asked, are we still friends? He's here. I'm here. He's Obviously here. not Toffee TV subscribers. No, that's what I said. Well, <laughs> Why not? Go if and you subscribe want to nearly on 10,000. Go, go and see how many videos we've put up recently on yeah. Toffee TV and then you'll understand why <laughs> Um, we, we I have had to just sacrifice MLS slightly for the last couple of months. <laughs> we had a break, like Rachel and Ross. Uh, Chris Pajak here, as always now, just here. And uh, what a great way to start. The new face of he's, MLS. He's, well, you say Take that. Me off the dejected. You say that. Last week, some of his comments means he, he got a slap. Uh, yeah, we won't go into them. This, they, were, they were almost ped like. Not quite as bad to be fair. The Ibrahimovic. Yeah, we won't go oh, back yeah, to that. Let's yeah, leave that where it was. Chris. What have you been saying about Slatan? No, no, it was all good, never, but it was just talking it. about. He's, it, the, he's the king. It, it was, yeah, it was, Chris was making him even more of a king. He king is the king. Dick. I think he made him. Um, I just don't like him. He looks amazing. Let's just start he's with. The, he's you the greatest human being on earth. This is why he's not <laughs> being here. This is why he's not being here. I think he is. I think he's a great human being. We'll talk yeah. about Slatan in a minute. You just chill for a minute. Right, I'm just saying. Chris, let's start the only place we can start, to be fair. What went on, man? The New York Derby. I was all ready for it. It was the time that New York City were going to say to the Red Bulls, we have arrived. Lampard was back in the squad. Vieira was giving it all this. They'd just gone on the road, got some big points. Come home. C can I say dick? They got dicked in the face. They got dicked in the face big time by the Red Bulls. I was going to say some, there was, something happened and the, there was no Vaseline involved. That's all I'm going to say. He lost looks, quite heavily. Chris. A 7 0 against your biggest rivals. It's, at home. At home. It's it's a farce. It's laughable how bad it was. Say it home. <laughs> it's, it was ridiculous, mate. And they just capitulated. I mean, there was no fight in the team from the way it go until the end of the match. It never looked like we were ever going to get anything out of the game, and it was just shocking defending after shocking defending after shocking defending. It was such a terrible game of football to watch from a from a New York City perspective. And you look at it and you think, I, I don't, jotted down all the goals and the seven lines on goals here because obviously one for each of them, and it's ridiculous. You look at them, six of them are from crosses. Crosses, six of them. How many crosses did they have in the game? Six probably. It's ridiculous, mate. They just can't defend someone. This was a joke throughout the entire game. Yeah. The the defending was non existence. There was no fight up front. And you look at that side and you think they should be better. Like that side with Pirlo and David Villa and all those players that have played so well shouldn't be getting beaten. They'll have never experienced getting beat 7 0 mm. ever. Those three players will have never experienced it. Okay, they'll have had some heavy beatings, but they'll have never experienced in that in their life. And it's interesting to say about the defending because. It, the, the talk was Vieira had got the defender right. He'd gone through all these different different formations. It looked like it had been settled. He'd got some decent results, and I, I'm completely shocked by this result because I honestly thought we well, didn't have to look at the league table. New York, they were second, yeah. weren't they? And mm. you only have to look at that and think they were they were uh, they were on the upward trajectory. And you thought they'd got some kind of consistency, and and the defense had settled down. And I think what it proves to me is is that. And I think we've said this for a long time. They really need a presence in that back four. They need someone who's been about, who's mm. who's um, seen it and done it. And it's it's to be honest, it's something that a lot of MLS teams need is a defender who's been there and seen it um, and can marshal. And that's the biggest thing they need. Now I mean, we spoke last week about John Terry, you know, and I know he's agreed to stay at Chelsea, but someone like John Terry in that back four that would never. I happen. don't even think it needs a, a John Terry. I think if you look like at what, Ridgewell, I like think a, what you look at Ridgewell's done to, with Portland. I think it's someone who can just organ. We've said this since the very very start of this yeah. of the, of the MLS show. If you can get a centre back in who can organise a back four, who knows, who knows, who can tell the goalkeeper where to stand, who can tell. The man in front of the back four way to be, I I think someone would piss the MLS. No, I right. think it'd be brilliant for it now. And I'm gonna direct this at you because he's getting up. Colo, I was thinking that when he was talking then, I was thinking that's the type of player. Yeah. He, you know, he doesn't need to have the, the most electric pace in the world, but just somebody and you know, again from my Liverpool perspective. John Flanagan in that regard as well, a, a lot younger but can organise the defence. Because whenever John Pla Flanagan plays for Liverpool, and you guys might not agree on no, this. No, no. Well, I've, I, I know. I, I've, I've got the absolute perfect one in my head, and he already plays for Manchester City. So, you know, he can come over. What's his? Uh, I've lost his the name. Michaelis. The Michaelis, who was linked last January, mm. but then because of the injuries to company um, and and a couple of other players, he, it, you know, was off. He could be the man. Okay, pace-wise, he's he's 
lacking. But remember when he first came into the Premier League and everyone said he didn't have the pace and he readjusted mm. and it is his experience. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this season it's almost gone just a little bit too far. I still think he could do in the MLS and I think he could organise and he'd fit straight into the system and you wouldn't have to pay him like DP money because he because well, whatever, you know. The, he, he's already on the Man City box, isn't he? So but the, the thing with this and what makes it so bad against the Red Bulls is that we've talked all season so far about how that pitch is incredibly difficult to score goals against. <laughs> yeah. And they've made a liar out of us there because the Red Bulls have scored seven. You know, they should know at the very least how to defend that pitch. Yeah. And they've failed on every I mean, single count. I mean, you've got, you're playing in a derby match. You give a call yeah. and away inside three minutes. Dax McCarthy, fellow Ginge. He's not the, the biggest of lads. He's given a free run on that. It's a great header, to be fair. It's a really, really good header from the set piece, but three minutes in. So he scores two from Edders. Two. Yeah. The from second the one's even well. worse. He's the shortest man on the pitch. The second one is even worse. And his tweet was amazing. What did he say? He just put a tweet on saying touchdown. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> it's just oh, with two hands like, like that. With two hands Twitter. like that. That is the ultimate. Just like yeah. I mean, I looked. I looked at the four of the seven goals were from set pieces. Four of the seven. I mean, I think it was that just shade off here. The sixth goal is a free kick curled, and the keeper comes for it and just leaves it's it. Completely unmarked. Isn't he? And the lad's got to just heads it. He's on the line practically when he knocks it in, and that's basic defending. The sad part is at 1 0, Davavilli had that chance, didn't yeah. he? And he, he took an extra touch, it was so unlike him. And if he just spanked the first time, 1 1, you're back in the game. Mm. Could have been so different. And they just fell to bits. They just. I think, that, was it the overhead kick? Right, right, Phillips. right Phillips. just that was the third. It was, it was, that was the one, that was the clincher, that right, was yeah. just like that. It was right on our first half injury time yeah. after three. I thought, to be honest, I thought the keeper should have done better with the header, the second goal. Yeah. And, and, the, yeah. and the overhead kick to be honest because it went in a slow motion or something mm. didn't it but we never really got a grip to Grella on the left yeah. wing there did we he, I think he assisted both the second and the third yeah, goals yeah. and one of them where he's doing a little few step overs on the outside gets to the bar line draws the ball in that's good wing play you know and I don't think we ever got a grip got to get really. tight. you've got to get tight there though they need a full back I think it was Alan he went past the, 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 he's like showing him showing him get stand up stand on him so therefore he's got nowhere to go. If he does you with pace, fair enough. But what I like about the Red Bulls is, is that uh, they've got a team of workers. Yeah. There's no there's no mega stars in there. They haven't really got a deep eight of of sorts. And they've got workers and, and the out the out completely outworked uh, city. And and what's wrong with I think New Yorkers at the moment for the for the three DPs they've got, they haven't surrounded them with people who are just going to work like I'm saying like organisers and that's what the Red Bulls seem to have they've got organisers in their team that, that can that, that see the bigger pitch I mean like something Jesse like that Jesse Marsh has done that though hasn't he he's got he's, you can see what they're doing the Red Bulls have, they haven't had a great start they've been hammered no. quite a few times but he knows what he wants he's got you know Bradley Wright Phillips he, it took a while to get his first goal but you know people he shouldn't be surprised he's getting braces he'll end up with 20 again because he's a finisher but he's been taken like you were saying he's not not the very highest level he's one down he knows where the net but is he's not they even put, one down is he let's yeah, be honest he's in league one, one he's working he? hard that's the thing isn't and it? he scores goals and, and that's the thing what Vieira needs to find he needs to find some do I, do I love, love like from an, uh, look, look, from more of a neutral perspective the fact that Red Bulls just kept going. Yeah. yeah. They just kept going. Which, that, is there anything better than that? Which was which was that? which was mentioned, I seen that was mentioned. <laughs> you wouldn't know, I was way. mentioned that. I've seen you that would. just the other side. Just the other way. I've seen that mentioned in the American press by a couple of people saying um Vieira was actually asked about it, I think, in the press conference and someone said to him, like, you know, uh, do you feel it's bad that they went because in American sports yeah, you know, it's, it's, got, it's oh, knocked it was, down on yeah, which yeah, I think is pathetic mm. we spoke up the score we spoke it? we talked about this about, about Everton last season where we felt, felt like they give up games when they scored a few goals and, and that was a, that was a sign of weakness and Vieri said it was the biggest compliment they could have paid us by keep going mm. you know if they backed off it would have been even worse he said, he said because a lot of Americans don't like that it's as you you know you were saying there whereas I think You've got to get over that, and if a team does stop playing against you, it's, it, it is that's a that's a that's a that's worse. Footy is yeah. a bit of a different sport as well. Look, American football, New, New England Patriots used to do it when they had all the scandals, and they did it because they hated the media and they hated everybody else, and they, and they did this like insular thing where it was them against the world. But in football, it can so easily come down to goal difference. Yeah, 
and it just doesn't happen in other American yeah, sports that and that's why you've just got to go for it all the time get as many goals on the board and don't concede but also I think there's no natural there are rivalries in American sports I don't want to put anyone down here but there's no we've seen the scenes before the game anyway I mean yeah. You know, for a, for a, for a derby that's two years old, that's mad. That, 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 and we've seen the last so year mad. as well. Is this all the, the throwing? Yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've seen the last year as well for a, yeah. for a derby that's so young. Um, but I think it's I think football just conjures up more natural rivalries. Whereas in the likes of American football, you've got teams that are playing each other that are well, like go like going across Europe, isn't it? Some of them, and it doesn't it doesn't create that rivalry. And I think in football you get that rivalry. So when you're in the match. You, you mean there was thing? I think there was a thing in the week, wasn't it? New York City were doing a um, uh, bring your Red Bull shirt yeah, and we'll, we'll swap, swap it, swap we'll it, swap it yeah. and things like that. And they're yeah. the things that get under support. They'll be getting a few returns. There, <laughs> yeah, they'll be getting returns and not and not not wanting anyone else's shirt. But th- that's in f- that in football that rivalry creates that hatred that mm-hmm. drives players on to want to score six or seven like that. Perfect. That, that Bax McCarthy tweet's perfect. That's one. That's that's finished. It's it. That's finished it. That's like you know, obviously with all the politics over. The, the game of football in America that that's just simplifies everything and just the, it's before we wrap it up Frank Lampard made his uh, long yeah. awaited the zoo shut was it? it the zoo was not open there was no BBC programmes needed Dancing with Ice is finished or it's whatever. all finished whatever he was on Strictly Come sitting or whatever he's on because he won't be on dancing he's got <laughs> Strictly Come uh, eating yeah oh. Ooh. but he come back Chris he, he, he got he, booed he got booed <laughs> But it probably wasn't the greatest game for him to return in. Uh, he's come out and said it's one of those things. You, you know, he, it's up to him to turn those boos around. He can't do much about it. I'll tell you what. What's I, your take on? I know you're not a big fan. Of book, no, I, I, I don't like Frank Lampard, mm. but he will improve that side regardless. Yeah. You know, he's a top tour professional. And I don't think that. I don't think that his games really changed that much in the last five years. I don't think he needs a yard of pace that he might have had in his younger days and stuff. And. You'll see him start to organise that midfield and that attack. But I've never seen him have an injury layoff this long. No, ever. No, that's ever. They brought him, I've said, said this last year, they brought him in too quickly. They rushed, they, should, they rushed him in. He got the injury in training. He should have been given a month off, like like everybody else uh, who seems to come over. He should have been given a month off. But it's not that. It's not that. It's what we always joke about. He pops up everywhere. That's the problem. You see him all. Over, you see him on like Instagram with his with his missus here and and the kids there. And then you see him on English TV and there's talk of him being on doing the Euros coverage. That's what winds people up. Mm. You know. Okay, he's never going to be sitting at home twiddling his thumbs while he's injured, but he's having a great time while he's the highest paid player in MLS. And those fans are like. You're, you're supposed to be there working hard for us recovering. You don't recover by sitting on planes, jet setting across the well, world. The thing, the thing as well, he could be imparting so much experience and knowledge to those players in training every single day. And that's the thing for me, you know, as a fan, you think, why is he not there teaching those players? Why should it only be when he's on the field? Because it shouldn't be. He should be there talking those midfielders through it. You know, the likes of Discarude and all that type of stuff. He should be talking to them through games and and also who, who he should be talking to is is Patrick Vieira. Yeah. He's yeah. He, he's he's a he's a you know a young unexperienced manager and he should be having discussions with him and, and them talking about what's going wrong and where they need to improve. Frank Lampard's got so much experience as a footballer working with people like you know Mourinho and and um, you know working with Sven Goran and Eriksson and Ancelotti. Yeah, he's worked with some of the best. Benitez. Yeah, he's worked with some of the most. He's not only the best managers, but some of the most organised and disciplined mm. man- style of managers. And if he can embed some of that. And don't get me wrong, but if you take this result out of it, I think Vieri's done a good job so far. Oh, yes, yes. It's just that it's happened in a in a derby and it's a it's a freak result. Even for MLS, this is a freak yeah, result. It was, it was. It's like, is it the joint highest now? Did Galaxy win eight one a few you, years? You back? don't normally you have don't games like this. Not not with one yeah. team score you're right, we have seven goal thrillers all the time, mm-hmm. but they're normally four threes yeah. or five well, you know, it, it, it was mad, it's it? absolutely mad. So I think Lampard needs to just get his head down now and earn his money. I don't think he can ever earn his money. <laughs> he, needs to, he, needs to, he needs to deliver some worth to that side, doesn't he? Yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Let us know about the results. Did Vieira get it wrong? What about Lampard? What are your thoughts? Would he right to get booed? Will he improve New York City? And do you need Colo Torre or Di McCabe? I want Colo at Liverpool. Well, yeah. You're not I'm, having him. I'm not asking for you, Chris. We're asking the New York City fans who are watching. Let us know what you think in the comments section below, uh, and we'll catch you on the next video.
Welcome to the MLS show. It is me, Bas. I found him. He's real. He's real. For the person who asked, are we still friends? He's here. I'm here. He's Obviously here. not Toffee TV subscribers. No, that's what I said. <laughs> Why got, not? Go and subscribe to nearly on 10,000. Go, go and see how many videos we've put up recently on yeah. Toffee TV and then you'll understand. <laughs> we won't go into them. This, they, were, they were almost ped like. Not quite as bad to me. The Ibrahimovic. Yeah, we won't go oh, back yeah, to that. Yeah, Let's yeah, leave that where it was. Chris. What have you been saying about Zlatan? No, no, it was all good, never, but it was never just talking it. about. He's the, he's the king. It, it was, yeah, it, well, Chris was making him even more of a king. He king is the dick. king. I think he made them. Um, I just don't like New York City. We're going to say to the Red Bulls, we have arrived. Lampard was back in the squad. Vieira was giving it all this. They'd just gone on the road, got some big points. Come on. Can I say dicked? They got dicked in the face. They got dicked in the face big time by the I was, Red Bulls. I was going to say, some, they would, why? why we, we I have had to just sacrifice MLS slightly for the last couple of months. <laughs> we had a break, like Basil and Ross. Uh, Chris Pajak here, as always now, just here. And uh, what a great way to start. The new face of the MLS. Well, you say Take that. Me off the you say that last week, some of his comments means he, he got a slap. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Let's just start it's with... Good. He's you're the greatest human being on earth. This is why he's not been here. <laughs> this is why he's not been here. I think he is. I think he's the greatest human we'll being. We'll talk about Slatan in a minute. You just chill for a minute. Right, I'm just saying. Chris, let's start the only place we can start, to be fair. What went on, man? The New York Derby. I was all ready for it. It was the time.